we can have our fat tissue growing what we can pinch and jiggle um, through two different processes. One, as you noted, is hypertrophy, where each individual fat cell is getting significantly bigger, and I mean four or five times bigger than normal. Or alternatively, the fat tissue, what we can see and pinch and jiggle, and why the scale is going up every year over year, the fat tissue can be growing through hyperplasia, which is a situation where the fat cell size is actually quite modest still. They're not particularly bigger than normal. We just have a lot more of them. So we're multiplying. That's what hyperplasia is. So we have hypertrophic fat and we have hyperplastic fat. Now, interestingly, on the hypertrophic side, that's where things start to go wrong. The vast majority of people uh, will go through the path of hypertrophic fat gain and only a relative minority of individuals. And this is about 10 to 15 percent of people who are considered obese. They have this hyperplastic fat growth. So it's much less common. Most of us go that hypertrophic route because by the time we've finished puberty, late teens and girls and maybe early 20s and, and most boys, then we have set our fat cell number. So we're growing our fat cell number throughout infancy, childhood, and pubescence or adolescence. And then by the time we're wrapping up adolescence, we have flatlined and we have plateaued. And the number of fat cells we made at the end of adolescence is the number of fat cells that we essentially keep perfectly until we get to around 70 years old. And now we start losing fat cells. But that lest that seem like a good thing, as you start to lose your fat cell number, you force a greater burden on the remaining fat cells to store the fat, thus bringing us back to the story of hypertrophy. Now, when a fat cell is getting big, which is that it starts to reach a point of maximum dimension that becomes damaging to a cell, a, a cell can only get so big. Every cell has its natural limits. The fat cell is reaching its natural limit, and thus it becomes insulin resistant in order to prevent further growth. So it becomes insulin resistant to save itself, little knowing that the cells downstream, which eventually would be all the cells of the body, are actually having to pick up the burden mm -hmm. as the cell is leaking free fatty acids. At the same time, even though fat cells have a very low metabolic rate, they nevertheless have a metabolic rate, which means they need blood, they need oxygen, and they need nutrients. But what starts to happen is as the fat cells themselves are getting bigger and bigger, they're pushing each other further and further away from capillaries or from blood flow. And thus the hypertrophic fat cell becomes hypoxic or low in oxygen. It can start to secrete pro-inflammatory proteins or prototypical inflammatory proteins that rather than inducing inflammation in cells actually increases the formation of new capillaries. So one of the molecules that the fat cell can release is vascular endothelial growth factor or VEGF. As it becomes hypoxic, it starts to secrete numerous um, pro-inflammatory proteins. VEGF and the synthesis of new blood is only one of them, but you can't really get that one without all the others essentially. And so the hypertrophic fat cells are trying to correct the poor blood flow by secreting this whole panel of pro-inflammatory proteins in the hopes that it will improve blood flow because it's better to improve blood flow than to die through necrosis. That's a messy death. But in the process, it's now leaking this whole stable of pro-inflammatory proteins throughout the body. So we have the hypertrophic fat cell leaking both free fatty acids, contributing to the so-called lipotoxicity throughout the body. All these tissues are starting to have to store more fat than they want to. And at the same time, releasing pro-inflammatory proteins. And the combination of those two things partially it starts to amplify the problem within itself. One, one, those are not only promoting insulin resistance throughout the rest of the body, because those will stimulate the production of a type of lipid called ceramides in all the other cells of the body, which is why I'm an advocate of the fat first view. It's because you have all the perfect ingredients to promote the formation of ceramides in any other tissue like the muscle or the liver, and now you're just a step away from type 2 diabetes.